Do you have faith in central banks when it comes to being able to curb inflation without taking us off this trajectory? Hi, uh, Shnali, thanks for having me. Um, yes, um, we still believe that uh, market um, expectations for next year in terms of risky asset pricing and growth outlook is very positive because um, they are feeling uh, pretty comfortable that growth will be um, about trend still and there are enough savings to support uh, consumers. Uh, at the same time, there are uh, some downside risks as well. Um, Looking at uh, the news we got uh, with Joe mentioned not supporting Build Back a Better Plan um, and with some previous fiscal support measures about to expire next year uh, as well, we are actually expecting contribution from fiscal policy side to U.S. growth to be negative next year. And um, also now central banks are uh, changing their reaction functions and um, actually prioritizing uh, upside inflation risks over uh, possible downside growth risks also which might uh, come from um, Omicron waves. So um, what we got was a super hawkish uh, pivot from Fed. Um, so not only are they um, uh, stopping um, new QE purchases in March, they also told us they are looking to deliver three rate hikes next year. And they have already discussed quantitative yep. tighten, uh, tightening. And what we heard from Governor uh, Waller last Friday was that they are looking to deliver that uh, after one or two rate hikes. So um, that can also happen uh, in 2022. So that will be a lot for the market to digest. OK, so it looks like we're going to have a really bumpy year. Just in terms of where you expect inflation to go next year, market pricing looks really relaxed at the moment. Market pricing basically is signaling that we're going to go back to around 2% uh, 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 in terms of US inflation. Do you believe market pricing at the moment? Um, well, even Fed dropped the word uh, transitory. So. Um, uh, the market uh, and central banks are aware that inflation pressures are much more broad-based right now rather than just being focused on energy prices or reopening um, related components. Um, so uh, we ourselves actually see near term some upside risks. Uh, we believe it's very likely that uh, U.S. inflation will move uh, about 7 percent in the first quarter. And there are also upside risks for uh, European inflation looking at what has been uh, happening in the natural gas market. Um, the market was already very tight with low inventories and when we saw a number of French uh, nuclear reactors taken off the grid and the Russian supply was lower than expected, we've seen a price spike. So there are also near-term upside risks for inflation in Europe. Um, but uh, looking uh, out into more uh, medium term, um, yes, we are expecting some supply chain related pressures to ease in the second half of the year. Uh, delivery times are already shortening. And the energy base effects mean that the contribution on headline uh, from energy side will be lower. And keep in mind, currently, when we are looking at the base effects, we are comparing 2021 prints versus 2020 prints. And in uh, 2020, we even had a short period where uh, the WTI prices were actually negative. So looking at where they are now, about $70 per barrel, that base effect this year was super strong. But looking into next year, in 2022, we are actually going to be comparing uh, 22 prices with uh, 21 prices. So the starting point will be much higher and the base effects will be actually um, not as uh, punitive for the headline inflation. At the same time, we do not expect to uh, move back to pre-pandemic low inflation uh, levels either. Uh, OBC is still very strong housing components, rent, OER, that's going to continue. There is massive pent-up demand for services, especially travel. Uh, that is going to continue. And wages are picking up. And yep. um, I was surprised looking at Fed's uh, December projections that they're already seeing unemployment levels next year below narrow, so below the equilibrium level. And uh, we know that there are some issues with um, some people still not returning to the labor market due to health care concerns, due to child care availability, well, some people tired. So um, if those um, issues become more structural, we could see even higher uh, wage pressures impacting inflation. You know, I'm wondering also, there is a non-zero chance of stagflation in the minds of many analysts and investors now. How do you view the risk? 
Um, yeah, um, especially looking at uh, what the market was pricing in in uh, Europe uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, um, uh, so um, after global financial uh, crisis, obviously, um, we weren't seeing coordinated fiscal and monetary policy. Um, instead, we were seeing austerity measures and central banks were the only game in town. So when we were looking at the distribution of inflation risk, the uh, market was more focused on um, inflation uh, surprising on the downside. But looking at what has been happening um, after the pandemic and looking at um, how fast fiscal policy measures have kicked in, obviously that distribution has uh, changed. And now market is very much focused on the um, upside risks on inflation side. Yep. So. Um, at the same time, yeah, there is uh, more uncertainty on the growth side. As we will see now, public policy step out and the private sector uh, will need yep. to uh, continue without the public support.